Hi there, my name's Richard. I'm in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales in Australia and today I'm doing a bit of plant hunting. Plants can live in a whole range of different environments and here they can live in the trees, on the rocks or cliffs and waterfalls. There's a whole range of places where plants and animals can live. The area where a plant and animal lives is called its habitat. Habitats can be really different but wherever they occur Plants can find their own particular needs for living in that particular environment. The conditions here can be very hot and dry, or they can be very cold and foggy like it is today. Oh, it is beautiful up here. I really like being in Australia. Me too. Although, I do miss our cosy treehouse. That's because the treehouse is your favourite habitat, Ash. <laughs> We're lucky. We can adapt to different climates and live almost anywhere. If it's cold, we can just put on lots of clothes. But it's a bit more difficult for plants. They all need food, water, shelter and space and need special adaptations to make sure they have all these things. It's the same for animals too. Can you imagine a polar bear in the desert with its very thick fur coat? Or a tortoise in the Arctic with no fur at all? Oh no, I, I definitely wouldn't like that. <laughs> Come on, you two. Let's see what Richard is up to. Habitats can be as big as a forest or as small as a leaf. But one of the main things that makes them different is how much shade, sunshine or rain they receive. If you look at the ground here, you'll notice that it's damp and cool. And there's a lot of shade from the trees as well. Plants that live down here have to be able to survive in low light conditions or grow up quickly towards the light. in here compared to outside. Yes. I think I would be trying to get to the light if I was a plant. Come and look at this, Ash. Plants like these mosses and ferns grow on top of each other to try and reach the light. It's so clever. Did you know that lots of bushfires sweep through the Blue Mountains? But the plants in these damper forest areas don't need to be worried about this. Sometimes it's good not to live in the sunshine. Ah, that's better. A bit of light and space. Most plants in this environment have adapted to dry, uh, hot conditions, although you might not know that today. Most moisture is lost through the leaves and many leaves are adapted to reduce moisture loss. Let me find you some examples. Have a closer look at these leaves. They're extremely small, reduced surface area and this helps reduce the moisture loss. This is the way this plant adapts to the uh, stress of hot dry conditions. These plants, eucalypts, have a different way of uh, stopping moisture loss. They have a hard, waxy surface and helps reflect the sunlight. Roots are a really important adaptation for dry environments as well. Plants such as these have roots that go really deep into the soil in search of moisture so that they can survive long periods of time in such a dry environment.
funny to imagine that these plants like warm and dry conditions on a rainy day like today. All plants need water, and in some places, they never know when it might come along, so they have to be prepared. It says here that some plants survive in hot, dry conditions by growing really quickly from their seed as soon as there is rain. They must have grown up quickly today. Where has Richard gone? Race you to the waterfall! Oh, that's not fair, Ash! Plants can't just move into the shade when they get too hot like animals can. They have special ways of coping with even the most extreme conditions. A beautiful park, a mountain, a rainforest or even your own back garden are all different habitats. You can help me out by making notes or even taking a sample of the plant and taking it home and pressing it. Make sure you tread carefully because these habitats can be lost. They can even be completely destroyed for buildings and roads. We need to look after them to make sure that these plants can survive. Thank you.